Good morning. Welcome to worship. Welcome to Hamilton United Methodist Church. How blessed we are to be together from wherever we are and everywhere we are. Amen. So we join our hearts in worship. Align our spirits in Christ Jesus. May we come to this moment fully present, fully available to the nudgings, the moving, the flowing of the Holy Spirit in our very being. For God is as close to us as the next breath we breathe. So let's center our hearts, breathe in God's Spirit. Breathe in God's love. Breathe in the ever-present power of God the Almighty. Amen, amen, amen. Glory, God is what our hearts long for, to 
the Spirit, if you feel like you uh, would like to stand and join us, if you feel like you want to stay seated, that's fine. If you feel like you want to clap your hands and dance in the aisles, please do. And we ask that God would do this. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. United Methodist Church. Welcome everyone who's here this morning and all those that are worshiping with us online. 
If you would please uh, continue to stand, if you are able, and join me in the call to worship. Spirit of the living God, we need your guidance, for the life of faith can be challenging. Spirit of the living God, equip us for faithfulness. Empower us to discern true kingdom values and inspire us to embody the good news of Jesus this very day. started worship this morning, but these uh, music ministry is, is bringing it all home today, and I, I praise Amen. God for that. Thank you. Okay, our scripture reading today is from Paul's letter to the Galatians. At this time, the Christian movement was still strongly connected to Judaism, and um, there's a very critical issue of the, the laws of Moses and whether Christians of that day should be, should be converted to Judaism as well as 
becoming uh, Christians, and this is the freedom that, uh, that Paul is talking about. Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 through 18. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is filled, fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, we're going to go right from there into the unison prayer. So if you would uh, join me in the unison prayer, please. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this space today and in our lives. We aspire to be better in our walk with you. We pray for you to remember and redirect our ways and allow your spirit to dwell among us, leading us on this journey. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everyone doing? Amen. Those that are worshiping with us online in the chat, you can type in how you're doing this morning. I pray that that everyone is blessed. And uh, we are at the, what, fourth Sunday? Yeah, fourth Sunday in January. Wow, it's amazing how time is passing by so quickly. Uh, Briefly, you have the announcement on the screen, as well as those who are gathered here in the sanctuary. You have them in your bulletin. I just would like to highlight a couple of them. There's one. Uh, There's one that's not printed. We are on the lookout for a youth leader. And so I ask that you would be in prayer, that God will send someone who can take over that responsibility as far as leading our children and youth. If you know of someone who um, is interested in serving in that role, please, please, please share their information with me uh, so that I am able to prayerfully discern where God is leading that individual as well as continue to pray for this ministry. Mm -hmm. And so again, if you are aware of someone who is interested in serving as a youth leader here at Hamilton United Methodist church, please, please, please reach out to me and share that information with me. The other thing I, um, would like to say is one of the things that I know about serving children and youth is that you actually have to like them. Amen. Yeah, yeah, because I'm just, I just want to add that in as a caveat, because sometimes we, we, we have people, you know, that, that say they want to work with children, but they don't want to serve children. See, when you serve children, that's something that's different. That, that means that God has spoken in your heart and that you have surrendered your life to this ministry that God calls you to when serving our children and youth, because One of the things I always tell leaders when I uh, assist them uh, with becoming youth leader and children leader is is that you have to have tough skin because one of the things that they will do is name your truth whether you want to admit it or not. And so so when serving children and youth, you have to be brave and you have to know that you are called to this ministry. I don't like to say it's work because it's actually ministry. And so that means that you have a lot of patience where when uh, they are being children and exploring the area, you have patience and you have the tolerance to uh, allow them to explore their area safely. And so I say that as a disclaimer so that uh, we know that as, as a former youth pastor that we know that we are where we are heading when it comes to serving our children. One of the things that I used to tell uh, leaders and especially when I was in the school system one of the things that if you want to get under the principal's skin, allow me to hear you yell at children. Now, if it's a safety issue, I can see, you know, stopping them from it. But on a regular basis with them doing things that children do, I, I have to remind people that, you know, we were once children before who didn't listen. And thank God that day is gone where children are to be seen and not heard. Amen. Hallelujah, lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
that day is gone where children are just to be seen and not heard. And so uh, I'm glad that as we learn about liberation, that we know that God is also speaking liberation to our children. And so that's a sermon that's coming for another day, because I think sometimes we, 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 we shut out some of the things that God is trying to speak through them and in them because we want them to fall within these parameters. And God is calling them to tear loose the foundation of the parameters that we have created and what we know as traditional church. Amen. Yeah. So get ready for that day because I'm that radical type of pastor when it comes to children and youth in our space. So it's going to be noisy in worship. Uh, I pray every Sunday as long as we continue to invite families to uh, worship with us here at Hamilton. So get, get ready for it. The day is, is, is coming. Uh, the other thing I will ask is, is that we're also still looking for worship leaders. And so if you are interested in serving as a worship leader, I ask that you would either contact myself or Reverend Allison. Uh, she's also spearheading uh, the calendar for uh, signing worship leaders to uh, each Sunday. And so one of the options that we have, if you're not comfortable standing here on Sunday, you can also be videoed. And so uh, it's just a matter of scheduling some time and we can, we can record you and you can still participate. If you're worshiping with us online and you would like to participate, please reach out to the church office or contact one of us so that we can add you to the schedule. Amen. And so one of the things I would also say is that it may be someone sitting there and say, I, you know what, Pastor, I wouldn't mind doing it, but I just don't have the courage. One of the things I would say, take the first step of faith. When I stand here, I mess up all the time. I, 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 I do. And you may not know it, but I do sometimes. <laughs> And so uh, don't worry about messing up. I, I say it all the time. When we're doing something to give God glory and we don't get it right, I think we get extra credit for trying. I don't know about you, but that's just the God that I serve. I, I just believe if I'm doing something to glorify God and it's, if it's not perfect according to humanity standard, God still sees my effort and call that good. And that, that's what I, I want you to know. And so if you would like to participate, please, 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 uh, get in contact with one of us so that we can add you to the schedule. Uh, the other thing I would like uh, you to know is, is that if you're not receiving the weekly e-newsletter from the church, please contact the church office so that you are able to uh, receive the information. You can also go on to the church website and update your contact information so that you are able to receive the uh, church e-newsletter every Friday it comes out. And so if you have not received it, check your spam mail because it may be there or either in your junk mail. Uh, but if you're not receiving it at all, please reach out to us so that we can add you uh, to the e-newsletter list. Uh, the other thing I would like to remind uh, members of SPRC, please do not forget that today I have uh, my, uh, my Board of Ordained Ministry interview and your time slot is scheduled for three o'clock. So please, 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 uh, check your email if you're a part of SPRC. That information was uh, sent to you again on yesterday. So please, please, please check your email and to be present. Uh, the last thing I would leave you with is, is that uh, someone would like for me to make an announcement for uh, this afternoon at 1 at Ely's Funeral Home. There will be memorial services for Michael, the son of Barbara McComb. And so I would plead ask that you would please stop by and share your love uh, with Miss Barbara. I've spoken with them and I won't be able to be there with them because of a meeting that was already scheduled prior to uh, this date. And so I ask that you would go and, and shower them with love uh, to let them know that Hamilton is thinking about them and also have not forgotten about them in their time of bereavement. So please, please, please uh, reach out to them on today. Uh, the last thing is, is that I will be on vacation starting Tuesday. And so if you need anything, any uh, pastoral care, any emergencies that come, at the, come up at the church, Reverend Allison is the contact person. Her information is listed here in the bulletin. And so if anyone has any need in the uh, during the time that I am away, please, please, please uh, contact Reverend Allison because we want to make sure that your needs are still cared for even in my absence. And so if all hearts and minds are, are satisfied, I pray that I have remembered all of those things that I was scheduled to uh, announce. Uh, and at this time, we will uh, stand and we will share in the sharing of the peace. And also at this time, I will dismiss our young people for Sunday school. You can meet at the back door. This is a time where we, we wave and acknowledge to our neighbors that we, we see them, we acknowledge their presence. Amen.
The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Okay, um, time for prayers of the people. We have a, a lot of people to pray for. Um, they are listed in your bulletin this morning um, in the insert. So please keep all those people in, in your prayers throughout uh, the day and throughout the week ahead. Um, and as usual, um, we are now, you um, can send your prayer requests into the church's office by Wednesday and they will get them into the bulletin. But we also offer an opportunity to um, to lift up names of those people who who need prayer um, for those that are online and those that are in worship. So if anyone has anyone they would like to lift up in prayer, could you please uh, let me know? Dolores. 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 Paul. Paul. Jen. Jen. Christina, Barbara, Barbara, 
I would also like to lift up Lexi, uh, baby Jonathan, Mark and Antonio, and Darlene. Marge, Mora. Mora, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, there are so many people that are in need uh, in our country and in our world and in our lives. People that we come across each day, Lord, some, some we know are in need and some we will never know. But God, they are hurting inside and they need your loving touch. They need to know that you are near and they need to know, Lord, that there are people around them that love them and care for them. And please, Lord, put us in their way. Put us in the situation where we can be God's love and Christ's caring. Lord God, we know that through your son Jesus, he is the ultimate healer and anything is possible. And we just are so thankful, Lord, um, for his sacrifice and for all that you give us. We ask you, Lord, to be with each of us this day. And just give us the strength, Lord, and give us the hope that is in your son Christ. And God, I ask um, you to just continue to love on us and to give us the support we need. And I'd like to end this prayer time with uh, the Lord's Prayer. So if you would please join me in the words that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Aaron, can you give me just a little bit more on my mic, please? Thank you. Amen. We can't call on the name of Jesus. We showed up to the wrong space this morning. Amen. Amen. That's why we showed up, because we believe that there is power when we call on that name, Jesus. I don't know about you. There are a lot of people I can call, but there is nothing like calling on the name of the Lord. Because when I call on Jesus' name, I don't have to worry about the line being busy. I don't have to worry about someone blocking my call. I don't have to worry about someone being busy and having too much on their plate to answer my call. I know when I call on the name of Jesus, that Jesus is always able to get on the line. I don't know about you. I don't know what that number you're dialing. But when I call on his name, I, I know that there will be an answer. Amen. 
Amen. Jesus, the name above all names. That's where our hope is this morning, church. At the beginning of this month, I started the sermon series entitled Reset. And at the very first Sunday of this new year, my uh, focus was Reset Your Faith. The second sermon was Reset Your Prayer Life. And on last Sunday, I preached Reset Your Purpose. And today, my, my focus is going to be, I, know, I am no longer the same. I am no longer the same. So reset your life. I am no longer the same. You've already heard the scripture read this morning, and so I, I won't read it again. And so at this time, I ask that you would bow your heads with me and pray. God, you are already here. And so we just say, hang out a little while longer. God, we sit at your feet this morning, thirsty and hungry to hear from you. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed us till we want no more. God, we pray that your word be lifted on today, that uh, some life will be saved on today. God, we pray that your word will be lifted on today, God, that someone will be transformed in this moment. God, I am the broken vessel that you have chosen to stand in this moment. And so, God, I say, have your way in me and through me. God, I surrender my will to you. God, my heart is open. My mind is open. And so, God, I say, do what you will. God, so that at the end of it, you will get the glory. God, we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. I am no longer the same. A teenage boy told his parents he was going to run away from home. He said, listen, I'm leaving home and there's nothing you can do to stop me. I want excitement, adventure, money, and fun. I'll never be able to find it here, so I'm leaving. Just don't try to stop me. And so as he headed towards the door, the father ran towards him and he said, Dad, didn't I tell you? not to try to stop me? The father answered, who's trying to stop you? I'm going with you too. <laughs> if we're honest this morning, just like the teenager, we know that, there, that this desire for freedom and wanting to have fun and excitement lives inside of us. If I pass the mic from pew to pew, I believe I could find at least two people who would testify that they have lived with the same desire to please me, myself, and I, regardless of what it may have cost to achieve it. As believers in Christ, this desire for freedom to, to please the flesh creates this spiritual battle that takes place inside of us. It, it places our will and God's will in battle. Oh, right now, don't, don't check out on me. Stay right here. If you're in the chat, don't switch over to another ser uh, sermon on a worship service this morning. I, I am in the Bible when I talk about this spiritual battle that takes place. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 7, For I know that good itself does not live within me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living on the inside of me that does it. Church, this desire to live by our own rules is so powerful within us that if we look close enough at toddlers, as soon as they discover this freedom and crawling, they no longer want to sit and wait. Uh, they want to explore the world all around them. Once they believe they are no longer dependent on someone to, to keep them, uh, to take them from one place to the other, then they want to explore the environment. Once they understand that they are no longer dependent uh, and, 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 uh, on someone to move them from one space to the other, then the challenge comes for the parent. They have the, a mobility, of, and it's good that they have mobility and that they want to explore, but they are not wise enough to know that there are also dangers all around them. 
Yeah, as, as believers in Christ, we, when we are babes in our spiritual walk, God places what I like to call spiritual baby bumpers called mercy and grace all around us so that as, as we go along this battle, we don't totally destroy ourselves. Through, through the working of the Holy Spirit, God allows us to grow through the stages of spiritual development so that we learn how to hold on to God's hand and listen to God's voice. When we surrender our hearts to Christ by, by faith through the working of the Holy Spirit with every step we take, God molds and shapes us in, uh, into this spiritual perspective, perspective so that we can be like Jesus. The more we walk with God, the more we look like Jesus, the more we walk with God, the worldly things that used to shake our foundation no longer has a hold on us. The more we walk with God, the more we can stand and say no weapon formed against me shall prosper. The more we walk like God, we have courage and confidence to fight on a new day. The more we walk like God, we can stand and declare I am who God says that I am. Oh, somebody say amen right there. Oh, that's the backdrop of what's going on in the text this morning. That's the backdrop that Paul is dealing with uh, with the churches of Galatia, Galatia after Paul left a popular teaching with them and something else took center stage. Something caused them to question just who Jesus is. Something caused them to wonder, if, did Paul tell them the whole truth? Something caused them to wonder, is there another message? They quickly forgot uh, what Paul taught them about Jesus and his redemptive work on the cross. They forgot that Jesus' sacrifice was not that so that I could live my best life now. It was so that we may live in this freedom to glorify God. They were Gentile Christians who heard Paul preach the gospel during his missionary journey. Uh, and like you and I, they were outside of the original covenant until God incarnate. Jesus came to be with us uh, so that we could have the opportunity to be in relationship with him. And after Paul, church leaders were, were not open to the shift that God had made in the church. They were not open to this newness that God had uh, destroyed the parameters and invited these Gentiles in. They were not okay that God had said that uh, if they believe, so whosoever believes shall, shall uh, never perish. They, they weren't okay with this. And so they started teaching uh, that, that there had to be restrictions on those who could enter in this grace. They, they started teaching that God had criteria established for those who wanted to get to know Jesus. They started preaching what's called nomism, uh, which is the belief that the Mosaic law and the other laws were God's divine instrument. They taught that the only way to be in relationship with God was to maintain the strict observance of the law. And the, they taught the only way that the church could accept you is that you had to be circumcised. They were stuck in, we've always done it this way. They, they, they were trapped in the box of, we've never done it like this before. These leaders missed what God had done and was doing through Jesus. They, they missed that, that God was no longer interested in the circumcision of the flesh, but that God was interested in writing the law upon our hearts so that we wouldn't be trapped within confinements created by someone else. Oh, I'm in the Bible. That's Romans chapter 2. Paul reminded them not to forget everything that he had preached about Jesus. Paul urged them to remember that if there is salvation, it's not because of the law. If, if there is salvation, it's uh, because of that man named Jesus. If there is liberation, it's because of that man and the work that he did on the cross that we could ever call him Savior. It's because of that man that we can say he's Lord of Lord and kings of kings. Paul said, hey, hold up. Don't forget what I taught you. The law uh, only exists to expose the sinfulness and to bring God's divine judgment. But Jesus came, my God, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. The law reveals just how sinful we are, but by faith in Jesus, we have been justified and made righteous before God. 
through this redemptive work uh, secured by Jesus on the cross, we can say that I am free and that I am no longer held captive. I am no longer held in bondage to, uh, to sin. I am no longer confined to the restrictions of this world. By faith, both you and I can say I have a new life that I don't look like I used to. By faith, uh, the old song used to say my hands don't look like they used to. Uh, by faith, we can say I am free. I don't know about you, but I can testify that because of the work that the Spirit has done and is doing in me, that the things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. By, by faith, I can testify that the things that used to push my button and get under my skin, now before I react, I know how to pray. Oh, that I, I wish I had some witnesses right there because if someone is honest before your, uh, your BC days, that means before Christ days, that you would give people a piece of your mind. Oh, uh, uh, how do I know that? Uh, let somebody cut you off going down old Coralie's. <laughs> Jesus is not the first word that comes to your lips. Oh, let, let, let's be real this morning. Let, let someone uh, take something that you're looking for when you get to the store and you really need that. Praise the Lord is not the first thing that comes out your, out your mouth. Oh, in, in the B.C. days before Jesus, before Christ, we said whatever it is that we wanted to say. And, and if truth be told, someone is still wrestling and at war in this matter because you're still saying what you want to say. Oh, I, I heard someone told me a long time ago is that if you want your spiritual man or woman to supersede your life, you have to feed it. Uh, I was told what you feed, that's what grows. So if you feed your sin and your flesh, that sin and flesh will uh, be the priority. But if you feed your spirit, that we will walk like Jesus. Oh, uh, I heard the proverb says that the power of life and death resides in the tongue. Oh, I don't know about you, church, but I, I, I can testify when, uh, that I no longer look the same. Since, since Jesus has changed my life, I am not the same Latasha. Since Jesus has come into my life, my spiritual lens is being fine-tuned so that I can see hope in the midst of places where others said there is none. I, I have the ability, ability, I don't know about you, to trust God for miracles even when the doctor's report says that there's nothing else can be done. Done. I don't know about you, but since Jesus came into my life, I have the power to tell some teenager who is struggling to hold on because if God did it for me, that same God is at work and can do it for them. I don't know about you. Maybe you haven't put on a new, the, the spiritual pair of shoes. Maybe Jesus has not changed your, your lens to a spiritual lens, but I know that I, when I hear God speak, I hear God saying, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has entered into the heart of those around me, the plans that God has. Is that somebody's testimony this morning? Yes. Beloved, there's something that happens on the inside of us when, when God changes us. Paul teaches us that when uh, uh, Christ changes us, that, that, that something happens to us. Paul shows us in, in the text that not only does our faith change us, but Paul shows us that we are free to serve in love. Someone say free. free. Verse 13, uh, part B says this, do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly. Oh, that's that dirty word, humble. Humbly in love. Paul tells us we should use our freedom in Christ to, to serve one another humbly. And love. Christianity.com says humility is grounded in the nature of God. God descends to, to help those who are afflicted, brokenhearted, and oppressed. End quote. Beloved, when we humbly love others, we become agents of love to bring God in the midst of others. When we humbly love others, those who think God has forgotten about them, uh, they remember that God, that they're having an encounter with God. When we humbly love others, that we invite God into our situation, regardless of who the individual is or what space we may be traveling in. When we love like God, we become agents of grace and mercy so that the those who are in oppressive situations know that God has not forgotten about them. Oh, Jesus said, whatever you did for the least of them, 
you did also unto me. That, that, that's what Jesus said. Whatever you, a service you did for the least of them, you, you did it also to me. What, whatever you took them, did you give them your best? Because whatever that is, you, you are doing unto me. Uh, did you show up when things were getting hostile? Because Jesus said that if you did whatever you did to them, you did also unto me. When we humbly serve in love, we do not get uh, the glory. I heard someone say that the only name that should be glorified is Jesus. And, and so when we serve humbly in love, God is the one who gets the glory. Oh, there's a song that I, that I love, and uh, the, the songwriter says that I will play the background. Jesus, so that you get all the glory. God, God, I'll stand and do the work, but I want to make sure you are glorified. God, I'll, I'll go where you say go, but I don't want the spotlight. God, I'll speak when you say speak, but I, I don't want any of the praise. God, I'll, I'll do what you tell me to do, but I don't want my name to be magnified. Oh, church, when we serve in love, we, we put the focal point on Jesus and not on ourselves. When we serve in love, we, we are called to love our neighbors. Oh, and I want to teach a little bit about that word neighbor uh, because sometimes I think we struggle with that definition of neighbor because we're looking at it through the lens of the world. When we allow the world to shape our understanding of what neighbor is, we, we cannot see ourselves in our neighbors. When we allow the world to shape our understanding of what neighbor is, then we act uh, in, in, in a different essence than what God has called us to. Timothy, a theologian, Timothy George said, the command to love our neighbor as ourselves sums up all of the commandments. This command is proof of the fulfillment of the law. That word neighbor in the text is deeper than the people that live next door to you or across the street from you. That, that word neighbor is deeper than the people who talk like you, sound like you, look like you, act like you, work where you work. That, that word neighbor in, in God's eyes is synonymous with all of God's children. Now, when God say love your neighbor as yourself, God is saying love them regardless of what their race is. Love them regardless of what their age is. Uh, love them regardless of what their ethnicity is. Love them regardless of what their zip code is. Love them regardless of what their gender is. And love them regardless of who they love. God's understanding of neighbor is all of God's children. God calls us to love one another. Why? Because that's who God is. Love calls us to stand and to be our sisters and brothers keepers even when the world says that we should be divided. Love moves us into action to share the good news with those who are lost even when others say that nothing good can come from that neighborhood. Love causes us to our hearts to be broken by the things that break God's heart because we are the embodiment of who God has called us to be. Love causes us to stand up when affordable housing is not available for seniors and families with children. Love causes us not to get comfortable in our pews and forget that there's work to be done all around us. Love causes us to lift our voices so that children, uh, the injustice against children God, can be dismantled. Oh, that, that, that's what love is. That's what Jesus is teaching in the text. When Jesus changes our lives, we believe that we can make a difference and, and love our neighbors as God has called us to when Jesus has changed our lives. We believe that we are free to walk by the Spirit, trusting God with every step that we take. When we are changed by Jesus, we believe that we can stand with authority and declare what shall be even when others can't see it. Uh, let's look at that word walk in the text. That word walk in the text. In the Greek, it means to keep on walking. It, it, it doesn't mean walk and sit down in your pew. It doesn't mean walk and I'm retired so I get comfortable. It doesn't mean walk and nothing happens. That word says uh, when we walk, that there, every step that we take, we continue to rely on the spirit because God has work to do with. That word walk with every step we take, God is, is saying that greater uh, is, work, uh, the, is the work that we are called to do. And so we can't get comfortable in our doing. Uh, with that word walk, every step we take, uh, 
I believe that God will give us the ability to stand up for our neighbors so that a change has to come. With every step we take, uh, the Spirit reminds us that no matter what the world may say, God calls us uh, blessed and highly favored. Uh, no matter what they may say about us, God says that by faith I am redeemed. And I just came to tell someone that with every step you take, hold on to God's hand and never let it go. Oh, like children, uh, sometimes when they're learning how to walk, once they take those first steps, they, they no longer want to hold your hand. But God told me to tell someone now is not the time to let God's hand go, that keep walking by faith and holding on to God's hand. Uh, now is not the time to say, I no longer need your help. Uh, God told me to tell you to keep your hand in God's hand. Uh, by faith, you will get to where you're going. Uh, God told me to tell someone who may be wondering, if you are walking alone, God said, don't worry, I still got you, baby. I never left you alone. Uh, this morning, someone may be wondering if God is listening. Uh, God told me to tell you he never let you go. A father and a son arrived in a small town looking for an uncle they had never seen before. Suddenly, the father, pointing across the square to a man who was walking away from them, exclaimed, There's your uncle. His son asked, How do you know that that's my uncle? You've never seen him before. The father said, Son, I know that that's your uncle because he walks exactly like my father. Oh, don't go to sleep, church. Uh, when we walk in the spirit, though, the world should know us uh, by our walk. When we wa uh, walk in the spirit, the world should know that we look like our big brother Jesus. When we walk in the spirit, the world should be able to say she knows the Lord. When we walk in the spirit, someone should be able to say he is with the Lord. When we walk by the spirit, somebody should be able to testify that I know that you know that you know that you know the Lord. Uh, when we walk by the Spirit, someone should be able to say, if I need a prayer uh, to go forth, I know who to call. When we walk by the Spirit, someone should say that, uh, if I need faith, that is the person I can call on. When we walk by the faith, our steps should be ordered like the Lord. When we walk by faith, someone should be able to recognize that God is with us. Oh, church, my life is never the same. Because when we walk by the faith, when we walk uh, in the spirit, the world should know that there is something different about us. The world should, should know that when we step into a situation that light has entered the room. When, when we walk by faith, the world should know that if things need to be changed and restructured and reordered, that when you show up, when I show up, God's seasoning, God's salt has entered the space. Church, when you have an encounter with the Spirit, someone should know that if, if something crazy is going on in my life, I could call sister so-and-so and sister gonna have a word. Uh, if when something, when, when uh, things are all out of control, when the wind is blowing, someone should know I can call brother so-and-so and he's going to pray with me. Oh, I came to ask this morning, has your life been changed? since your encounter with Jesus? Has your life been changed since Jesus showed up and knocked on your door? Has your life been changed since the Holy Spirit starts speaking on the inside? Church, someone should know who our Father is because we walk like our big brother Jesus. That's the word that God sent me here today to share with someone whose life is yours reflective of. Who, whose life is yours reflected of? I pray on today that, that this word will, will stir in someone's heart. And that you, as you go throughout the rest of this day, it, 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 whatever it is that you're in conflict and in battle with, that that name Jesus, you'll start calling on and saying, change my heart. Reset my life so that when I walk, people know that I'm walking with you. Today, someone may be worshiping with us. You may be here in the sanctuary or you may be worshiping with us online. 
And you may be saying, Pastor, I'm not sure about this walking and who this Jesus is. And one of the things that I will tell you this morning is that there is no one like Jesus. There, there is no love like God's. God is the only one that sees broken vessels and says, I, I still can get some glory out of that. God is the only one that, that sees our flaws and said, don't worry about it. I can love you into who I created you to be. God is the only one that says that I can take what others have discarded and use it for my glory. As we reset our lives, as, as we reset our spirits, as we reset our minds, our focus, and our per perspective, I pray in this season as we walk throughout the rest of 2022 that someone could say you're walking with Jesus. If you're here this morning and you may be saying, I don't know that all there is about this man named Jesus. I'm not really sure of everything that he's done. Uh, you may be here, you're saying that uh, I know who Jesus is, but I'm, I'm looking for a place to become a disciple. Let, let me be the first person to welcome you to Hamilton United Methodist Church. I would love to be your pastor. These men and women would love to be your brothers and sisters in Christ. The doors here of Hamilton are always open. Hamilton has a reputation of being the friendliest church on the hill. And one of the things that I know about being the friendliest church on the hill, that means somebody is walking like Jesus. And so if you're looking for a church home, if you're looking for a place to walk like Jesus, let me welcome you. Let me invite you to this place called Hamilton. You may not know all there is about Jesus, but let me tell you that there is no big brother like him. You may not know all of the fancy words that we use right now, but if you walk with us, I promise you that God will um, grow in your heart and the Holy Spirit will speak. And so if you're here, I invite you. You can go on to the church website and to share your information and say, I want to know more about Jesus. I want to give my heart to the Lord. Or you can call the church office and say, hey, I, I would like someone to call me back because I want to surrender my life to the Lord. If you fall in either of those categories, let me just tell you, that's the best choice that you can make. There are a lot of things that we reset. We reset our phones, we reset our tablets, we reset our computers. But when we reset our hearts to follow Jesus, that is the greatest decision that we will ever make. And so don't allow this reset to happen without giving God your heart. Walk like Jesus so that someone will have an encounter with Jesus by being in your presence. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks and we give you praise. God, we thank you for trusting us in this walk. The songwriter said, I will walk by faith even when I cannot see because this broken road you have God, I trust you with it all. God, even when I don't know the direction that you're taking me in, God, I trust that you will provide a way. God, even when I'm not even aware of what you're doing, I will walk by faith because I believe that you will get me to the destination. God, we give you praise for changing our lives. God, we give you glory, God, for resetting our lives. Have your way, God, so someone will have an encounter with us. Have your way, God, so that someone will come to know you through us. Have your way, oh God, so someone will still see the light in the midst of this darkness. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Somebody say amen. the same but Christ changes us when we walk in the spirit the world will see the world will see as we love our neighbors as we serve humbly so only Jesus is seen so this last song uh, we're going to sing a lot of questions <laughs> and I don't want them to just run right past you so I'll just point out a few will you leave yourself behind if I but call <coughs> your name will you care for cruel and kind 
and never be the same. We are no longer the same. Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through God's sight, God's touch, God's sound in the air, God in you, God in me? So if you would like to join us in standing to sing this song, don't let these questions just go right past you. As you sing them, ask yourself, will you let the world see so that you will no longer be the same? Will you leave yourself behind? be seated at this time. At this time in our worship experience, this is where we walk and put our faith into action. This is where we say, God, I trust you with it all. I, I surrender my resources uh, to you because I know that you are more than able. One of the things I always say is that no one adds like God. God adds by multiplying. God is the only one who could take what we see as little and transform it to much. And so giving your tithe and offering is an act of faith. Giving is an opportunity to say, God, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I believe that you can and that you will. And so as you can see on the screen, there are many ways that you can uh, put your faith into action here at Hamilton United Methodist Church. And so uh, if you would follow the prompts on the screen or if you're here worshiping with us in the sanctuary, there are trays that are located at each of the doors. And as you exit uh, the sanctuary, you can leave your tithe and offering there. As we set our reset our lives in this season, I, I pray that we will re reset our understanding and, uh, and share our resources and to trust God with it. Because it's impossible to reset our lives and say, God, I expect and I trust you to do more over here when we don't expect God to do much on the other side with our resources. And so I pray that if you've never uh, tried God in your giving, that you would reset your mindset and your heart and that you will trust God in your giving. Together, let us repeat the offering prayer. Abundant God, Today we commit to giving you all that we are and all you have provided to us. Please 
keep us from only following the letter of the law. And instead, help us to be led by your spirit in all things. Receive our tithes and offerings today and give us wisdom so we may use them to bring you glory. Amen. Use them. You just prayed that. Use them to, bring, to give God glory. At this time, I ask that you would stand for our benediction. I pray that something has been said or a song has been sung. Let's give our musicians a round of applause for the service that they have done on today and, and ushering us into worship and, and bringing the spirit in here into uh, Hamilton. And so we give God glory for the, their gifts and their talents that they're willing uh, to share with us in this space. I also want to thank our worship leader today, uh, John, for hanging out with us and for leading us in worship. Let's give him a round of applause for that. Amen. Thank you so much for your courage to stand before God's people and declare God's word. God, may we leave this place sure, being sure that you are with us. May we leave this place called Hamilton excited and re ready to humbly serve your people. May we leave this place believing that you are the God who can do anything but fail. Now go forth, walking like your big brother Jesus, so that someone will know him by being in your presence. Go forth now, declaring there is hope, so that someone will see the ability to to move forward and to walk by faith. Go forth, speaking a reset so the world will know that God is still up to something. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day, everyone. God's blessing, and we will meet back here, same best station, same best channel next time. Amen. <laughs>